Yo, Elliot, I just joined the program last week, loving all the content so far. Thank you for all that you do to help guide men back on the path of righteousness in our fallen world. I was raised Catholic, fell away from the faith in my teens. And now I'm returning to the church in my early 20s. As a teenager, I was extremely self-centered and focused on cultivating my vision for how I wanted my life to go. I now see the futility in this as ultimately it's up to God how my life goes. That being said, having a vision for my future did have a certain utility. It gave me a sense of purpose in my life, knowing where I was going and why I was doing what I was doing. Having this faith in my plan gave me confidence and helped me better represent myself as a high value man. Now, as I strive to root my identity in Christ, I struggle to find this confidence and zeal for life because I can't fully know what God's plan is for me. Where should I draw my confidence from? It is not for my own personal competence and potential for worldly success, if not from my own competence and, worldly, and potential for worldly success. How can I be a high value man in the eyes of God and the world simultaneously, or is that not possible? Appreciate any wisdom uh, or thoughts you have on this matter. Please keep doing what you're doing. So I've spoken about this before and it's a very fascinating, I got an interesting take on this. First of all, God speaks to us through revelation, but not in the kind of revelation most people think, right? Like he's speaking to you from a cloud in the sky, right? Or, or an angel comes to you. This is not theologically sound. This is, this is me. This is Elliot Hulse, the book of Hulse. If you look at your life, it's very easy to see where God is leading you. I mean, from your gender to your parents, to how many siblings you have, to where you were born in the world, to how you were raised, to what your tendencies and propensities are, right? Are you athletic or are you brainy? All these various things start to show us what our path is, right? Taking stock of what we got and taking and being very clear about what's in front of us, right? It's tough to see clearly, but it's a matter about being real, right? Being real, being honest with yourself about who you are, what you got and where you are, right? And when you can step back without having any feelings about it, without having any hangups about it, without being... Uh, having an opinion about it, but just being realistic about yourself. And you can see now your feet are on the ground. And then it's just a matter of doing the best that you can with what you got right where you are. And life unfolds perfectly for you. I remember when I was in my early 20s, and I was trying to make my life too, I would have all these grand goals, grandiosity, right? I would have all these things I wanted, places I wanted to go, things I wanted to do. When now in retrospect, and that's why I can speak so confidently, in all regards, they were completely out of context for who I am and what I'm doing. But I saw it in the world. I saw other people doing it. I was like, oh, I want that too. I want that too. I should have that too. I should do that too. In this program, if you're new here, you start out with the massive action plan. So you've probably heard me say troll goals. These are your troll goals. Troll goals are goals that come from outside the world. They're not soul goals. Soul goals come from inside you and they unfold in your life. You can very easily see where you're going and therefore the goal becomes very obvious. Oh, I see where this is going. And so I can kind of pick my head up a little bit and I can see, well, it only makes sense that things, like for me, for example, as a kid, I was the, always the fastest and strongest in my class. My uncle came and lived with me and taught me how to work out when I was in kindergarten. Then when I was 14 years old, he came back and taught me how to use a barbell. I became very good at football. I mean, all these things I didn't do. They just, it was. And as a result, I wanted to be a strength coach. It only made sense. It was like, oh, I'm going to teach people how to lift the way my uncle taught me how to lift. It wasn't, I didn't have to daydream about it or, or, or I didn't need vision boards about it. I didn't need mantras and, and to brainwash myself. I didn't need to use a law of attraction or any of that shit. I didn't need to do anything. It was just very obvious. It was like, oh, I see. Even the work that I do here with you guys right now, I, I, I ponder sometimes, how is it that I sit here and I just give advice? That's what I do, right? Well, when I was younger, I was the oldest. And I was like a, kind of the leader of all the boys. And they would come to me and ask me my opinion. And then as a trainer, people would ask my opinion. And you know what my dad is? My dad's 
an opinion giver. My dad, people come to my dad for opinions all the time because my dad lays it out like it is. So when I look at my life, it's not that I made it this way, but, and I would say this about myself and I'll say this about all of you. If you're honest, you'll have a sense about where they're going, where your life is going. I would dare to say that we're all a little bit psychic about what our lives are going to be. I think a lot of times if our goals and our visions and our dreams are truly aligned with who we are, we don't need goals and visions and dreams because it's being revealed to us. It's it become, and especially if we're seeing clear, those things are there. We're almost a little psychic. When I look at my life, sometimes I'm like, I saw this before I got here. Right. And I think we can all sort of do that. You got to notice the difference between when you're hankering and, and wanting and grasping and reaching for something that's out of proportion with who you are and what God's plan is for you. And when they're authentic. And that's why I give you guys the, the whole the whole practice of finding your soul goal. Right. Now, is my is my method for helping you find your soul goal foolproof? No, it's not. But what does it do? What do I ask you to do? I ask you to fast for 72 hours. What does fasting do? Fasting gets you out of your own way. When you're fasting, you can think a lot clearer. You are not addicted. You don't have hangups. So by fasting and then praying, right? Open yourself up to the spirit. Allow, ask God, pray to God, ask God to reveal to you what your true soul goals are. You'll, you'll start to get a better sense rather than, and like if you were anything like me when I was younger, man, I would watch like MTV. When I was in college, you know, I was like in my 20s, I'll watch Biggie and Puff Daddy. I remember there's one video where they're like on a yacht and uh, they were like drinking bottles of vodka and it was all pretty girls around. And I thought that was my goal for life. <laughs> I thought that's what I, would, I was going to do. And that's when you, in your question, you say the self-centered focus on cultivating your vision. Here, yes. That's we all kind of get caught up in that because this world teaches us individuality reigns supreme in this world. It's all about my life, what I create for my life, who I become, who I want to become without any regard for the theodrama. This is what R R uh, Richard uh, uh, Bishop Barron says. He says you can be involved in the ego drama or the theodrama. The ego drama is what I think my life is supposed to be and what I'm going to create of myself. This not only is, is this, we know that this is, and you're learning that this is not helpful, but we live in an age where that particular sentiment, I would say is the crux of the demonic uh, diabol diabol diabolical delusion that we live under. So much so that if I feel like a girl, this is how retarded we've become. If I feel like a woman, well, then you need to call me a woman, right? You don't get to create that. That's how involved in the ego drama that we are. And I think that because I feel like a woman, I am a woman. And not only that, this is how crazy it is. You now have to call me a woman. <laughs> you got to call me he, she, or whatever, pronouns, right? This, that is the height. This is the height of our rebellion against God. Transgenderism is the height of rebellion against God. It means not only do I not accept anything about myself, I don't accept anything about myself. I identify with what I want to think about myself. What I said earlier reigns supreme, it truly reigns supreme, is no, 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 you got to look at what you got, bro. You, there's no making visions for yourself. I can't have a vision to become a, a mother right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much I want to become a mother. I cannot become a mother. Even if the world tries to convince me I can, and they have these people that, I don't know, they do surgeries and stuff. It's weird, but it's totally disoriented. It's, it's, it's diabolical. It's delirious. It's degenerate. It's all these things. So for you in your early 20s, where are you? You say you're in your early 20s. Here's the thing. This is what I would, this is the sentiment from which I would I would invite you to proceed. All those visions aren't really even your visions. They're revelations from God based on what's in front of you, based on who you are. And they're right for you to look up for them. It's right. It's good for you to mission towards them. It's good for you to want to do those things to the best of your ability. 
It's all good. It's all right. It's all true. And I struggle with this myself too sometimes. I think I need to do some sort of like eval, e what did these call it? Evangelize. I need to be, because now I'm Catholic. I think I got to tell everybody about being Catholic. I was like, no, no, no. That's not what God asked me to do. God asked you to be a strength coach and to make men strong again, Elliot. If that, if you being Catholic has something to do with it, then that's, that's fine because you're just being you, right? I have to be me. I have, I have no choice. I wear my heart on my sleeve. So I wear, uh, I wear a miraculous medal, right? Like and I have all the pictures up, right? I'm just being me. I'm not evangelizing. I'm literally, I'm not evangelizing. <laughs> it might not seem that way. I'm just doing what God, I'm being where God put me. I'm just, what's in front of me? Okay, now I'm this, right? I'm being honest with myself and I'm, and I'm, and I'm being authentic with the world. As long as we're being honest, honest with ourselves and authentic with the world, everything unfolds perfectly for you. Be grateful. Here's another thing too, because we got to, I mean, this is all God. So we have to keep God in mind. Be grateful for the vision that is unfolding in your mind and ask God to let you know whether if it's from him, please, like I said before, if this is from you, please guide me to do it right and to do it for your glory. This is, this is the, this is the, this is, where we got to proceed from. Am I doing this for my glory or for God's glory? Right? And it doesn't have to be anything glorious, right? It literally, if you're a street sweeper, you're doing it for God's glory because we need this, 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 the streets clean. I was thinking about the truckers. These truckers are, they are heroes, man. These guys that are in the Canadian truckers and the truckers out here, these guys are heroes. They, they're not living, they're not doing glorious work. They're doing important work. And if they're doing that work with a sense of devotion, they're doing that with a sense of glorifying the Lord through their work, which I know a lot of them are, right? They realize even through their protests, they're like, look, man, this, we can't continue to live under Satan's reign. We have to step up. We got to speak up. We got to do the right thing. These are the, these are the most important people in our world. Anybody who's doing anything from the sentiment of glorifying the Lord is doing important work, no matter what it is. The minute we think we're being selfish, oh, I'm, I got, I'm glorifying myself, or I got to make myself look good. And look at me, I'm a guy who's on camera all the time. So I can very easily fall into that ego drama. I used to fall into it all the time. Oh man, I didn't sound so good. Oh, I didn't look so good. Oh, but then I got to, now as I'm older, I recognize, like, but it's not about you, E. It's not about you. The only thing I criticize myself about is if I say something that's that's absolutely wrong and I realize later like oh that was wrong right and I just because I don't want to lead anybody down the wrong path right otherwise it's just my opinion right and and so I just leave it you keep having a vision you keep being on your mission but you say I strive to root my identity in Christ do it for the glory of the Lord that's all you, just remind just I'll leave you with this no matter what you do no matter what your, you know, you say, where should I draw my confidence from? And my personal, should it be my personal confidence or, and potential for world, worldly success? Yes, you do have to rely on your own personal competence. There's some things you just can't do. And there's some things that you're gifted to do. Same thing with me. There's some things I just can't do. I can't do that. I don't have that personal competence, so I can't rely on it. It's the same for you. Ralph Waldo Emerson often says, every action is measured by the sentiment from which it proceeds. I'm gonna offer you a sentiment from which to proceed from no matter what you do all the time. It's a short prayer. I've been, I prayed this prayer before I got on the call here with you guys. I prayed it before I was working with my children earlier today. I try to pray this prayer as many times as I can throughout the day to, it, 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 for many different reasons, but of course to center myself and to be humble. Let's pray it together. I'll do, it, I'll do it here with you guys. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Direct, O Lord, all of our actions by thy holy inspiration and carry them on by thy gracious assistance so that every prayer and work of ours will proceed through thee and by thee find completion in Christ our Lord, amen. Write that one down. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs> Write that one down. Write that one down. And if you pray that prayer before all the work that you're doing, all the things that you're into, even if it seems like, you know, sometimes very religious people will be like, oh, you shouldn't be trying to make money. Oh, you shouldn't be trying to make money. But listen, if you're doing it for the glory of the Lord and that you're using that money to do good things, right? And you recognize that it's not yours. This is St. John Chrysostom. It's not even your money. 
right? Is 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 God's, and He's giving it to you to do something for Him. He's using you as a He's using you as a tool. And if you keep that in your mind, then you reach for the stars, dude. Reach for the stars. Do not do not settle. Reach for the stars. Be fully everything God wants you to be in the Theo drama, not the ego drama. Done. Yo, are you ready to become a king in your life? If so, I'm looking for a few more guys that I can work closely with in order to help them dominate in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, then just go over to my Instagram account and DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, my team will get back to you with the details. If you're able to message me today, I can guarantee you that you'll be able to work closely with me. So DM me the word king on my Instagram and I'll get back to you with the details right away.